Thanks for checking out this video and let's just kind of jump into it. What films are coming to Shudder in July? Um, I know that they probably had to have a pretty good lineup because there were a lot of people who were going to be disappointed once the second season of uh, The Last Driving with Joe Bob Briggs ended. So I've already, you know, seen rumblings of that online of people being like, what are, what's get, what even going to be there? What are we going to do after Joe Bob? Well, there's an answer from Shudder for their July lineup, and I'm personally pretty excited. I feel like they have at least a few good films every single month, even when they have, like, a down month. Or at least, you know, by me saying that, I mean ones that I'm particularly interested in watching. So there are a bunch I'm interested in watching uh, this time around. So July seems like a particularly good month, in my opinion. Now let's go through this one. Uh... And then at the very at the very end of it, I'll talk a little bit about some things I'm doing with my channel. So, but first, the Shutter stuff. So first, we're going to go over the Shutter originals and Shutter exclusives that are going to hit in July. The first one is Metamorphosis, which hits July second, so that's very very soon. In this fresh spin on a demonic possession story, Jung Su, an exorcist, must face a demon he tragically tragically failed to defeat in the past when it targets his brother's family next. The demon assumes the form of different family members to sow confusion and distrust, destroying the unit from within. With his loved ones in peril, Jung Su must face the demon again at the risk of his own life. Um, okay, and that's a Shudder original. Um, oh, and just so people know, all Shudder originals and exclusives I will be doing uh, no spoiler reviews for, which will be available before the film hits Shudder on my channel. Um, I already have one up for one of the films, and I'll tell you which one it is, because the film, the makers of the film had reached out to me before it started hitting, like, festival circuits and stuff like that. So, that's already available, I'll tell you about that when we get to it. So, the next is a Shutter original, this one's called The Beach House, this one hits on July 9th. Escaping to a family's beach house to reconnect, Emily and Randall find their off-season trip interrupted by Mitch and Jane an older couple acquainted with Randall's estranged father. Unexpected bonds form as the couples let loose and enjoy the isolation, but it all takes an ominous turn as increasingly strange environmental phenomena begin to warp their peaceful evening. As the effects of an infection become evident, Emily struggles to make sense of the contagion before it's too late. That one sounds particularly interesting to me. But like I said, I'm doing, you know, screeners for all the originals and exclusives. So regardless of if it sounds interesting to me or not, I will be doing a no spoilers review for it before it comes out. So let's see what happens with that one. Um, Lake of Death is the next one. Now this one is Thursday, July 16th. Uh, and this is a Shutter original. A year after her twin brother died a mysterious death, Lillian and her friends head to the only family cabin to say their goodbyes. But soon after they arrive, eerie and gruesome events begin to occur. As the lines between reality and Lillian's nightmares blur, she must fight both an external and internal struggle to stay alive. Is a lo horrific local legend becoming reality, or is the real enemy among them? That sounds interesting as well. Next one is Impetigor, and this is another Shutter original. They've got a lot of originals hitting this time. This one hits July 23rd, so towards the end of the month, and it was a Sundance 2020 official selection, so it should be pretty good. After surviving a murder attempt in the city, Maya, a down-on-her-luck young woman, learns that she may inherit a house in her ancestral village. With her friend Dinny, Maya returns to the village of her birth, unaware that the community there has been trying to locate and kill her to remove the curse that has plagued the village for years. As she begins to discover the complicated reality about her past, Maya finds herself in a fight for her life. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I'm down with it. And then this next one is the one that I already have a no spoilers review up for, so you can check that out now on my channel. And that is the documentary In Search of Darkness. I know a lot of people have not gotten their hands on this or didn't want to pay the price for it because it's a hefty price. It's like 60 bucks because it's a four-hour documentary, but it is well worth watching. So since it's hitting Shutter, I recommend everyone, everyone watch this if you are a horror fan, especially if you're into 80s horror. So... Tracking major theatrical releases, obscure titles, and straight-to-video gems, this four-plus-hour documentary explores 80s horror films year by year. It's very in-depth. Topics include groundbreaking practical effects, the home video revolution, poster art and project marketing, creative and budgetary challenges, sound design and musical scores, the 3D resurgence, heroes, 
Heroes and Villains, Sex, Nudity, and the Final Girl Controversy, and the pop culture context that fueled the genre. Filled with countless clips and entertaining moments, In Search of Darkness is a nostalgia trip through a game-changing decade as told by both experts and the icons who influence the modern landscape of genre cinema. Yes, I totally agree with that. It's a must. Um, it's very in-depth. It's very good. The people interviewed are awesome. A lot of the stuff said is really awesome. It's a really good time. I, I highly recommend it. So, Okay, so that's it for the Shutter exclusives and originals. So getting to the other films. Um, the first one hitting July 1st immediately. I'm going to be checking this out. I will be watching this and doing a review for it because this is a movie I've actually heard a lot of people talk about. I haven't actually seen it. It's been on my list for a while and that is The Burning. Uh, when an ill-advised prank misfires, summer camp caretaker Cropsey is committed to hospital with hideous burns. Released after five years, hospital officials warn him not to blame the young campers who caused his disfigurement. But no sooner is Cropsey back on the streets than he's headed back to camp with a rusty, rusty pair of shears in hand, determined to exact his bloody revenge. Yeah, I've heard very good things, so I when I saw that was on there, I got pretty excited because I'm like, I've been meaning to watch The Burning, so here we go. Uh, here's another great one. This is one I watched recent-ish, um, but I'll probably rewatch it. Return of the Living Dead. Two employees of a medical supply company accidentally release a toxic gas that raises up the dead. Soon the area is overrun with flesh-eating residents of the local cemetery who are hungry for human brains. Yes, that one is also coming out on July 1st. Also coming on July 1st, so they're just dumping a ton on July 1st and good ones. Sleepaway Camp, Sleepaway Camp 2, Sleepaway Camp 3. Awesome. That is a great marathon right there. If there are people out there who are pining for the Joe Bob Briggs double feature, I would recommend picking a Friday night instead, act like it's a Joe Bob night, and do the Sleepaway Camp triple feature for yourself with some drinks. Why not? Uh, bad campers meet brutal ends in this cult favorite 80s slasher series. In the first film, slightly traumatized and painfully shy Angela Baker is sent away to summer camp with her cousin. Not long after Angela's arrival, things start to go horribly wrong for anyone with ill intentions. Who's the secret killer and what's behind their murderous motivation? Things start out campy but get nastier and nastier until the shocking ending. In the sequel, the grisly murders that terrorized Camp Arawak six years earlier have become beloved ghost stories around Camp Rolling Hills. But as the campers uncover the truth behind the murders, their carefree days at summer camp come to a violent end. And in the series' third chapter... Set at a camp for troubled youths, the psychotic killer that has roamed the woods and been the topic of many ghost stories is still lurking about. Yeah, I'm excited for that. It's going to be fun. July 6th, a film, Jerusalem, by the Paz Brothers. I've heard about this film. Uh, in this award-winning supernatural horror, two American girls on vacation follow a mysterious and handsome anthropology student on a trip to Jerusalem. The party is cut short when the trio are caught in the middle of a biblical pop apocalypse sorry trapped between the ancient walls of the holy city the three travelers must survive long enough to find a way out as the fury of hell is unleashed upon them that sounds interesting uh then we have another triple feature you could do and i may do this as a triple feature because i have not seen these films and i've heard that they are ones i should see uh directed by william lustig might sound familiar uh, Jul coming July 13th, there will be Maniac Cop, Maniac Cop 2, Maniac Cop 3. Two New York policemen and a policewoman search for a killer in uniform who should be dead. In the sequel, the Maniac Cop is back from the dead and stalking the streets of New York once more. And in part three, when footage is doctored to, uh, to place blame for a hostage's death, on a comatose officer, the maniac cop takes it upon himself to exact revenge upon those responsible for smearing her name. I'm excited for those. Like I said, the, those have been on my list to watch, and I haven't watched them, so I got a lot of watching to do in July. I'm kind of going to have to buckle down, it looks like. July 20th, a film called Nina Forever. Holly wants to prove she's not some prude, but when she starts dating the brooding Rob, she's not expecting a three-way relationship with a rotting corpse. That could be problematic. Though the deadish Nina's blood can be washed out of the sheets, the couple have to go to greater lengths to give her soul peace, if that's even possible. Interesting. The next one is called, also coming out on the 20th, The Pool. 
In this simple yet surprising film, a young couple find themselves trapped in a 20 uh, inch deep swimming pool with no way out, and that's only the beginning of their problems. Hmm. That's an interesting premise. I don't know if that would be terrible or, or good. It seems like it could go either way very easily. Then July 27th, a film called Patrick. A comatose patient uses telekinesis to kill in this terrifying Australian horror classic. Lying quietly in his hospital bed, one might mistake Patrick for a hopeless case, but Patrick's more than meets the eye, and when he becomes fixated on his nurse, he starts using his powers to stop anyone who tries to come between them. Okay, sounds good enough. Uh, then the last one that I have to go over is called Turkey Shoot. I think I've heard of this one, but I don't know much. In a dystopian future, a group of prisoners become targets in a state-sponsored hunting game called a turkey shoot, where they'll be prey upon, preyed upon by evil gun-toting government officials. If the prisoners su survive, they'll be set free, but the prisoners don't want to take that chance, and soon the totalitarian rulers find themselves with targets on their back. Okay. And that's it. Uh, it sounds like a good lineup to me. I think it's going to be fun. So uh, let's hit that up. Uh, now I said that I would be talking about what I'm going to be doing, some of the stuff coming uh, to my channel in um, July. So we're still doing live streams, so every other Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, we have live streams where we talk in depth about a video, I'm sorry, about a movie, and the one for July 4th is going to be Under the Skin, which is a film with Scarlett Johansson by A24, studio and that's available on netflix at the moment we also then talk about a less serious film uh so for that one we're pairing it up pairing uh under the skin up with dead alive the peter jackson film so that it once again that's on this channel july 4th at 7 p.m eastern standard time and then it's every other saturday basically so we'll just keep doing that so stop in check it out if you want to um, for some reviews that I'm definitely going to have coming up, I have a review for The Lighthouse by A24 coming up. Uh, that one's a definite. I have a review for Summer of 84 coming up. That's another definite. Uh, I have the final review for the Tremors uh, movie series, Tremors 6. Um, I forget what that one's called. Cold Day in Hell, Tremors 6, Cold Day in Hell. And then I'm almost done with the series for Tremors, the TV series that was from 2003 that was a sci-fi show, which is it's available on YouTube at the moment. So I'll have a review for that out coming up and then also for what we do in the Shadows TV show as well. So I'm working on um, trying to find another show to kind of go through and do a review on. So I'm thinking maybe Hannibal, if I can get people's uh, input or if there's another show you want to hear, you want me to check out and do a review on that's horror, we can do that. Uh, and then some other movies that I have coming up I'm considering doing. Uh, the House That Jack Built, maybe. I know that's on Hulu at the moment. Uh, obviously a bunch of Shudder stuff. Uh, I like to focus a lot on Shudder, but I do get away from that from time to time because I kind of like my interests wander. So, But anyway, I mean, I'll, I'll consider some recommendations. So if people have movies they would like me to do review videos on, you can put some comments down there and, you know, we can go over it. So... Anyway, um, ho hopefully everyone's excited for what's coming to Shutter. Hopefully people are excited for stuff coming to my channel. So, I mean, if you're not, that's fine. But, you know, I would hope some people would, ex would be excited about that. But anyway, thanks for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit the subscribe button. That's your best way to repay me. If you like any videos I do, it is literally like a second to do, and it's totally painless for you. Also, if you're going to subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you know every time I'm putting up a video or if definitely if you want to get involved in the live streams, it will let you know when I go live. You will get an email saying Carlin Cook is live, so it's a good thing. Put some comments down there. Put a like on this if you want to. And until next time, keep it brutal.